Hi, I'm Ernie Conover. Your workbench is the most important tool in your shop. Not only does it bring your work piece up to a civilized height and provide a rock solid surface for you to work on that piece, it is very flat and provides a surface by which you can judge the flatness of all your work. The term benchmark comes from this. Therefore, the surface of your workbench should be treated like an altar. However, after 35 plus years, my workbench is looking a little dowdy and definitely could use a little sprucing up. It is important that when I refinish this bench that one, I resurface it in such a way that it stays dead level. Secondly, that I put a finish on it that will help it to resist the rigors of further use. I like a good oil finish like water locks. As I've thought about refinishing my workbench, I've decided that the tool well, this area ahead of the work area, has been nothing but a catch-all for junk for 35 years. When you try to vacuum those chips out, you end up sucking up valuable little bits and pieces that you have to go and open up the vacuum and go fishing for. Therefore, I'm going to route out a ledge all the way around this tool well and put this piece of European beach down in a rabbit, glue it in place, and level that out with the rest of the bench. I've successfully fared over the tool well of my workbench. My next job is to plane this plank off level with the rest of the workbench. I'll do this with a couple of well set up jack planes that are nice and sharp and ready to go. And a couple of wine sticks, which are white oak sticks. And I'll use those to judge that I'm bringing the plank down to the same height as the workbench and make everything level. And I'm starting to cut back here, but not. I've got a little bit of a ridge here, a little bit higher here. I bevel this edge so that I won't chip out as I come across. But to get this level across here, I now go to a shorter smooth plane, which will allow me to bring that edge right down flush with the bench. After I brought the inserted plank that I fared over the tool well with down to the same height as the bench and straight across, I've now started to plane all the way across the bench to remove all of the wear and tear from 35 years of service. Again, I'm not going with the grain, I'm going across the grain is the most efficient way to plane this down. As we get into the final surfacing of this bench, there are some places where there's some bad mistakes that have happened over the years that leave some missing wood here. So I'm filling those areas with uh, white shellac. This is dry shellac. I'm melting it in with a soldering gun. It'll dry in seconds, really. And we'll just plane that shellac off level with the bench top. And that leaves us with a level surface. We know it happened, but the bench is good as new from a working standpoint. I've planed a good 32nd of an inch off the original part of the bench and more than a 16th off this inserted plank that I put over the tool well. I've now checked it for flatness and I've gone to a metal straight edge from my wood wine sticks at this point and check that I'm extremely flat both across the bench and end to end. It is time to put the hand planes away, cancel the trip to the gym. It is 
time to switch over to electric tools and use a large six inch rotary sander. I sanded the bench with 60 grit, 120 grit, and 180 grit papers. I have brought it to a pleasing smooth finish. I then cleaned up the shop and vacuumed the floor and the bench itself. A vacuum is a great way to get all of the dust off a piece that you're about to finish. You may also use a tack rag, which is a rag that, as the name implies, will actually pick up dust and have the dust stick to it. You can buy one at any paint store. I'm now going to apply the first coat of Waterlock's original sealer finish. It also comes in a low VOC form for areas that require that. I'm going to pour a little into a paint tray, seal up the can so I don't spill it, and I'm now going to use a lamb's wool pad. I simply put it in there and soak up a good amount of finish and just apply it by patting it on. Just move nice and steadily. And this ensures a good film of finish. This will put on about a four mil thick finish. Since most oil finishes are about 25% solids, when it dries, this will leave you a one mil layer of finish. It will take two more coats before we are finished minimum. There is our first coat of finish. We need to now wait a full 24 hours. This is very important with oil finishes, especially with the first coat, which sinks deep into this fresh wood. Curing time is dependent on temperature, the warmer the better, and ventilation, good ventilation is important. So I will leave the shop windows cracked a little bit tonight for we are expecting nice warm weather. Well, it's been a full 24 hours and time to put the second coat of finish on. We're just going to dip our lamb's wool pad in the finish and apply another coat. It's that simple. It's been about 27 hours since I applied this second coat of finish. It is now cured good and hard and is starting to really build up. I took an opportunity to very lightly scuff sand this with a piece of 220 grit sandpaper. Not so much to improve the sanding that I'd already done, that was just fine, and Waterlox has enough viscosity to fill 180 grit sanding scratches. It was more to get rid of any dust or uh, hairs from the lamb's wool pad that got into the first two coats of finished. I'm now going to apply the third and I think final coat because this is built very well. It's easier to build on a horizontal surface like this, especially when it's good and flat and physically level with a builder's level. Well, I'm really happy with the way my workbench has turned out. It's looking really spiffy. I'm sure you're asking, why go to all the trouble of putting such a nice finish on a workbench? Well, several reasons. The first being, I think that if you come in every day to a really nice looking workbench, you do better work. Secondly, this finish does protect the bench. You can actually spill glue on a a good oil finish such as water locks and you simply scrape it off with your fingernail. If you want to, put a coat of paste wax on the bench after the finish is fully cured. This will give it even more protection against things like glue sticking to it. However, I like to protect my bench when I glue up 
or do finishing by putting a piece of butcher's paper down. Is paper backed by a plastic film. I put the plastic towards the bench and keep the paper side up. It's great to work on. Secondly, make yourself a bench hook. They're left and right. You can turn it this way and do left hand cuts. Turn it this way and do right hand cuts. And this allows you to do very precise cuts without cutting the bench. Also do your chiseling and chopping on top of a bench hook. A piece of leather, I use a piece of what's called bull hide, it's heavy leather, and I put this down under wood when I clamp it to the bench to work on it. And not only does this keep it from slipping on the waxed and finished surface, it quiets up the hammer blows a little bit and makes everything go better. Now and then you should spruce up your bench by applying another coat of finish. Be sure and wash it down with a strong soap solution such as trisodium phosphate, TSP. This will cut through all the grease and grime and get it off the bench. I do a little scuff sanding then with 220 grit sandpaper and apply another coat of finish just as we've applied all of these. This will keep your bench looking beautiful for years to come. This is Ernie Conover saying thanks for visiting. Hi, I'm Kelly with Waterlax. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this helpful. There are more videos and guides available at waterlax.com support. With passion and pride, we've been making Waterlax resin modified tongue oil wood finishes since 1910 by hand using only the very best ingredients along with our original family formulas. Whether it's our original or marine formula, we have a product that's perfect for your next wood project. To us, there is nothing more rewarding than preserving the authenticity and inherent beauty of wood, which is why wood enthusiasts everywhere choose Waterlax.